before we go into other things let's wait for other members of the class to join then we'll hop into things to of course uh, part 341 public and nutrition in nigeria it's, um i believe it's one of the major courses for all students of public administration uh, this um is particularly focused on uh, public administration here in nigeria public man public and trade as a whole and public administration here in nigeria what it's looked like how it's been grown what are the expectations and characteristics and features of public administration in nigeria it's going to be a comprehensive walkthrough and um I hope you uh, find it very useful as we go into things, get your writing materials available, make sure you have your um, writing materials as I will be highlighting the points, you know, the points we are writing tonight, and I will really need you to pick down those points. So with this being said, let's just um, opt straight into it. So we have, what is administration? Speaking of administration, what is administration? From what I have here, you know, administration is the organization and direction of persons in order to accomplish a specific end. Organization and direction of persons. Why do we have to organize? Why do we have to direct people? In order to achieve specific 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 goals this is what administration are the questions administration answer so from this we can say administration the word administration itself can be defined as the process of organizing and directing people in order to accomplish there is always a reason why you are directing and organizing people and this is why the why and the why is you have specific goal in mind so the keywords here are administration is the organization and direction of persons in order to accomplish a specific end also we have administration is the action i think i need to put my phone on silent so we don't get distracted So, um, administration can as well be defined as the process whereby determined action is taken in pursuit of a conscious process. It can be defined as a process whereby a determined action is taken in pursuit of a, con of a conscious purpose. So, we have that as that. So we also have, you know, it, is, it can also be defined as a systematic ordering of affairs. Systematic ordering of affairs and the calculated use of resources. So you are systematically ordering the affairs of people. Resource, I think, basically, there are people and you definitely calculatedly using your resources. And aimed at a specific goal now to put this to put this in proper it is a systematic ordering of affairs and the calculated use of resources aimed at making those things happen which one wants to happen so it's a it's, it's a process that has to do with systematic ordering of affairs and the calculated use of resources to bring to an objective to pass to bring an objective into pass or become reality so we have that as that it's also said to be administration is the organization and the use of men and materials to achieve a purpose to accomplish a purpose the use of men 
and material to accomplish a purpose. So we have um, we have that as that. So we have the two features of administrations. Administration has two major features, and these features are cooperative effort and pursuit of ad cooperative effort and pursuit of common objective. Cooperative efforts, efforts of not just one person but group of individuals and everybody having one just one common goal just a common goal <clears throat> common objective so that are the features those are the features of administration so we have administration is concerned with organization of men and material to achieve desired ends so we have a handful definition of what administration is then we have talking about administration what do we call public administration then from the definitions we'll be able to gather from what administration is the direction of men and resources to achieve a particular goal so could we then say public from the word public we can then say public administration can be defined as the direction of ensuring public responsibilities have been attended to from the word public and administration so let's go into details of this public administration is defined as the art and science of management it's defined as the arts it's also defined as a science of management and is applied to the affairs of the state that's one definition which can also be defined as a detailed systematic execution of public law detailed systematic execution of public law as a second definition it can as well be defined as the particular application of general law as an act of administration it can be defined as the application of general law as an act of administration so we can also define public administration as a fulfillment or enforcement of public policy as declared by the contempted authorities. Public administration can also be defined as a fulfillment of public policy. When public policies have been observed by has been observed by the citizen as instructed by the elected authorities. So we have um that means that it is said to be one of the short definitions to it again is said to be law in action public administration is said to be law in action you know we have that as that to the executive side of the government it's one of the definition very short and precise definition of public administration it is law in action it is the executive side of the government so we have that as that so we've been able to talk about the features of administration we've been able to talk about what administration is so we're going to talk about what public administration is so now we are adding to the definition of public administration by someone called negro negro is spelled n-i-g-r-o the definition of public administration by negro so we have um that's that and we move straight into it okay so uh we go straight into that hear what Negro has to say about public administration so Negro said public administration is a cooperative group effort in a public setting Negro says public administration is a cooperative group effort in a public setting he also says public administration covers all three branches these branches are executive legislature and the judiciary and their relationships covers all three branches of it covers three branches he was precise about the branches which public administration covers and he said public administration covers executive legislature legislative judiciary and everything that goes on in between them which is relationship so he also said public administration has an important role in the formulation of public policy and is thus a part of political process 
public administration is then said to be a part of political process according to Negro. So Negro also said as a field of study, public administration as a field of study and practice has been much influenced in recent years by human relations approach. He said it has been influenced recently by human relations approach. So we also have public administration is closely associated with numerous private groups and individuals in providing services to the community. It says public administration is closely associated with numerous private groups, according to Negro. So Negro said something, said, made mention of about seven points there, and we've been able to identify most of them. So what are the basic concepts of public administration? What are the basic concepts of public administration? So we have one, public policy. Two, we have ecology. Three, we have local government administration. Basic concept of public administration, we have human resources and personnel management. So we then move to the basic, com the basic components of public administration according to, jo to Goel. So we're talking about that of Negro. Now this is Goel in 2008. Public administration, according to Goel 2008, is a closer focus on results in terms of efficiency and effectiveness of a service quality. It's a closer focus on results in terms of efficiency and of and effectiveness and service quality it pays closer attention to what we refer to efficiency effectiveness and service quality according to goel so it's a, goel also said public administration you know the, is the replacement of highly centralized hierarchical organization structure with decentralized management environment where decisions on resource allocation and service delivery are taken closer to the point of delivery and which provides scope of feedback from clients okay now what you see here in essence is that public administration has been used to substitute what is called highly centralized hierarchical <laughs> organization structure public administration has been helped to decentralize that so he also said public administration is is used as a mechanism to improve performance he also said public administration is used as an incentive to improve performance a mechanism to improve performance incentive to improve performance strengthening of strategic capacities greater accountability and transparency through requirements to report on results so it's very particular it is much more particular i think i need to switch this a bit yep. uh -huh. i think this is better okay um well to turn and hit is more particular about results and that was why he emphasized more on efficiency effectiveness and service quality so we have that as that. So we move to the characteristics of public administration. And we have the characteristics of public administration as the first thing we have here, we have the primacy of ends, goal, or objective. Characteristic of public administration. Public administration is particular about end results, goals, and objectives. Public administration is as well particular about interlocking relationship between policy and formulation implementations and rules policy formulation policy implementations as well it's very particular about how policies have been in have been um, formulated and how they have been implemented the integration the third point now the integration rule organization when we talk about integrate the integrative you know Policies are conceived and formulated outside the framework. How do you integrate 
you know, it's one thing is for you to create a policy. Integrating it into the affairs and work now is another thing. So it's very particular about how policies are being integrated into the organization, how it can be made to work. Now, the fourth one we have the interposition of values and ethics. Although administration is a universal concept, its practice tends to condition by value prevailing at a particular time and space. Interposition of value. It's also you know, it's particular about work values and ethics. How we you know, communicate values and ethics on the job. So we have the intuition of economic values. It also imposes economic values. Public administration of characteristics is that it imposes economic value. So we have so we have that as that. So my uh, I think my button is loose there. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's fixed now. So uh, the I'm uh, just move move we move on. So we have what is the nature of public administration? Now we're talking about the characteristics. Now we're talking about the nature. What is the nature of public administration? So we have there are two main divergent views regarding the nature two separate views regarding the nature of public administration then we have the first one as integral view when we talk about integral is more the internal view and we have the managerial view and we okay, just two we said two so we have the integral view and the managerial view the integral view is just basically about all activities undertaken in pursuit and in fulfillment of public policy. All the activities undertaken in an organization to ensure that the organizations achieve its specific and common goal. I'm talking about the managerial view now is only viewing the manager is only viewing all activities from the managerial aspect or like the integral view where it involves all activities but here in the managerial view it's only viewing of all these activities from the managerial view so that is a basic and short interpretation to that so we have um what is the scope of public administration speaking about the scope now now somebody called Gooding and his friend Powick in 1937 they said something about the scope of public administration and it includes about one, two, three, four, five, six, about six. They, they highlighted six of them. So we have the very first one, which is planning. Gulick and Orwick in 1937 give listed concepts, the scope of the pattern of public administration. And the very first one they, they listed was planning. Planning, we have organizing, we have staffing, we have directing reporting we have budgeting so from the word planning this means working out broad outline to be done working out broad outline like specifying or making arrangement or writing out the intentions your intentions are, and how you intend to achieve them the method that method which you are to adopt to achieve your intentions so simply put, it means working out in broad outline. It means working out in broad outline the things to be done, the method to adopt to accomplish this purpose. So we have organizing. As, as we have said, organizing is the establishment of a formal structure of authority through which work is provided arranged defined and coordinated when work, when work is divided so divided arranged and coordinated so we have staffing you recruit and train personnel and their conditions to work that is on that staffing so we have directing making decisions issuing orders and instructions we have reporting you know, informing the agency to whom executive is responsible about what is going on Reporting just has to be given who are involved in the executive, you know, 
all takes about has been on on the floor. So we have budgeting, means fixed planning, control and accounting. Fixed planning, control and accounting. That is for budgeting. So we have that as the concept of a bigger party. We have that as the scope of public administration. So now we are going down straight ahead to what we call scope. Talking about scope of public administration by you know that the scope we made mention of just now was by Gulick and Ulrich 1937. Now we have this same scope but by a different person. And this person is called Bawan and Bushan. Bawan and Bushan in the year 206. 2006. So now the scope, according to them, the scopes are one administrative theory. Administrative theory includes the study, structure, organization, functions, and methods of all types of public authority engaging in kind out administration at all levels administrative theory now speaking of administrative theory it has is include the study of structure organization function and method of all type of public authority engaging in doing what carrying out administration at all level national regional and local okay um uchichi is a host tonight it's good to have you join us. We came a bit late though, but nevertheless, it's good to have you join us. So we have um, that as that. Then we have the applied administration. Applied administration. It may be difficult to, okay. Speaking of applied now, applied does have to do with seeing administration in different views, in seeing administration in different fields. So we have in the field of politics, in the field of, in the law field, in the finance and defense, social and economics. So applied administration, that is what it definitely stands for. So we have here, what are the 10 principal, principal functions of applied administration? About 10 principal functions. We have the political, which includes the study of the executive legislature relationship. We have the legislature, which has to do with delegated legislation. We have the finance, which has to do with financial administration. We have the defense, which has to do with military administration. This is administration called through across all fields. Politics, legislative, finance, defense, social. So when we we'll talk about social now, we're talking about housing, food, social security, and employment. So we have economic, foreign imperial problems and techniques of imperial demon, domination over the nation so we have local as well so all these are you know the principal function of applied administrations so we have what we call what are the approaches to the study of public administration there are several approaches to the study of public administration and from what we have here we have the historical approach you know basically when we talk about history it has to do more with belief and knowledge of the history of a particular people you know the in-depth study of their history and how it affects the administration so we talk about the legal approach this has to do with the formal structure and organization of public bodies legal approach from the word legal so it has to do with the legal structure and organization of the public bodies now we have the historical approach as to do with the history, the culture, you know, where they emanated from and how it influences the administration. So we have the legal approach, we have the institutional approach, when we talk about you know, the linkage between the study of public administration and the institutes of government. That's basically the institutional approach. So we have the behavioral approach. Now, the behavioral approach here is a bit different. You know, behavior approach is basically concerned, you know, about the study of human behavior in diverse social environments and how this tells on public administration. I believe that is clear enough. 
So we have that as that. So the behavior approach now you know, studies the following important features. Features like literature, uh, literature is descriptive rather than perspective. Okay, now increase attention is paid to the individual based on more re realistic research concerning motivation. And it emphasizes on the operational definition. It is chiefly, though not exclusively, concerned with quantification and formal theory structure. Uh, it is said to be interdisciplinary in character and makes considerable use of professional growth. It just has to do with everything that has to be the study of human behavior. Just like we have here, is more of descriptive and not pass perspective. It studies human. It studies motivation and exception. It studies how human makes that human beings make their decision and how they respond to their environment. It says it emphasizes on operational definition on terms and empirical study on rigorous method. So it just has to do with how human beings react basically to stimulus. Speaking about the behavioral approach. So we have what we call the structural functional approach. The structural functional approach is said to be the framework that provides an important mechanism for the analysis of different social processes. As to do with social processes, mechanism that provides enough analysis for different social processes is what we refer to as a structural functional approach. So we have the ecological approach, you know, ecology has to do with environment. Culture in you know, culture in being an outgrowth of the interaction of value and trait of the administration system with social system as a whole. So when we talk about a situation whereby culture is being considered as what influences the administrative system as a whole, they were talking about the ecological approach. And we have that as that. So we have what we call various principles of administration. Various principles. So we have first principle. We have principle of political direction. The principle of political direction is basically a mechanism used in public administration. Okay. In that it's a... Uh, it's um, more of a mechanism using administration on subordinates to obey direct instructions from above. It is said here that subordinate mechanism will be general direction as issued by political authorities. Political direction. So we have um, that as that. Then we also have what we call the principle of authority. This basically has to do with how much authority is being obeyed as carried out. Authority is the power or right of a person commanding other people to do things and in general of getting work done by them. The authority comes from administrator from the nature of things. It results from the position of superiority occupied by some people over others. So principle of authority just from the word from the definition of authority itself if we are asked you know, to define all um, the speech we have to say something about all these principles you can always develop a point around them this is just why i'm very particular about getting the concept you can get the concept then to build the point around there will not be a problem so we're talking about the principle of political direction which has to do with on being authority from you know it's a mechanism whereby the political authorities use on their subjects whereby they have instruction given out and this mechanism ensures that the subordinate receive instruction and they work in accordance with it so we have a principle of authority as well how much obedience do they carry out the authority given by from above from those in the authority as an administrator so we have also the principle of public responsibility the public responsibility has to do more with responding to the needs of the public. That's what the public action is all about in general. It says, uh, you know, political executive who in turn is responsible to the public through legislature and public administration that is not, okay, it's basically more of principles, you know, basically more of public responsibility. How much you as a leader 
up oh yeah storing the portion of authority as an administration is giving listening here to responsibility demanded by the public so we have the principle of social amenities social amenities is also one of the requests one of the demand of the public social action is impossible without administrative action so basically this principle speaks more about how public administrators are involved in social actions so we have that as that we have principle of efficiency for public administrators it is required that they are efficient all the time principle of organizing is that you mo your work must be coordinated it must not be scattered as an administrator this is one of the principles that draw attention to the need of careful organizing and structuring administrative mechanism we have the principle of public relation speaking of public relation now it means that welfare of individuals and it affects their you know public relation has to do with welfare of how well welfare of individuals have been attended to it's essential it must understand that the needs and desire of the people needs to be met speaking of public relation so we have um that as that so what are the major differences between public and public administration and private administration i think this is clear this is self-explanatory speaking of politics versus profits you know, in public we have politics in in um private we have profit private are profit oriented so in public you know talking about the public responsibility now it's not public responsibility it's more of private responsibility under the private so that's the nature the you know, function you know, the nature of private now they are profit oriented is more of how they can use minimum resources to achieve maximum gain and unlike public it is more of how to attend to people's need and you know we have that as that so we have what is the evolution of public administration in nigeria evolution how has it how has public administration evolved over time in nigeria so we have the ritualistic feature we have the existential terrestrial pool and we have as well the moralistic orientation we have what we call concern unity factor we have the autocratic tendency so to quickly go through this we have the existence we have what we call the ritualistic feature the feature may be found in a society where the rationalist or implicit tradition is seen governor behavior decision even in a situation of uncertainty will tend to base on formal deductive reasoning or on observer where region and ritual color people okay now just thinking about this ritualistic feature now is more of how rational people will behave you know and this is definitely geared towards their own gain now concerning the guilt or innocence and time with the fact not clear is left of the spirit now at another time decision may be left in hand in the hope that some ancestral or other spirit will exert you know necessary retribution so ritualistic is more of what they've been known to what they when women act rationally you know to a system whereby they are used to so we have the existent territorial pool now existing territorial pool traditional society is one of which both terrestrial and ex terrestrial forces collide so when the extent terrestrial extra terrestrial and the terrestrial right then we can refer to as existence of terrestrial pool so we have a uh, that as that okay all right we are we are back and we are live i think the network um is some issues there i think we're back now so um so we have um evolution you know you know we have the ritualistic you know this is more of the rituals of the land you know whereby society is governed by rationalists 
you know, you know, since the um, situation is you know, tend to be based on deductive reasoning and without fact. Now, we don't try to view the world, you know, the decisions like, okay, crucialistic is more of when um, decisions, you know, administrative decisions are given to be decided by traditional societies, you know, traditionalist. It has to more, you know, we are, now it has to be based on facts and what they've observed. So we have the moral, um, moralistic orientation. This orientation has to do with the behavior of traditional society, it's clearly de- um, classified as rational or irrational. Uh, they are like, okay, now the use of spirits guide behavior in society. This is a situation whereby moralistic orientation whereby spirits are evoked to punish evil doers and guide good doers. So we have that as that. We have the autocratic tendency. You know, we want to talk about the autocratic tendency. Now, you know, areas of authority and responsibility impose check and balances with the organization and therefore helps in structuring the behavior of human being when it poses check and balances in order to you know that autocratic things so we have um, some highlights and evolution of administrative mechanism of nigerian civil service highlight of the evolution evolution of nigerian civil service mechanism just no? we have from 1866 to 1874 the central administration for lagos gold coast gambia sierra leone was transferred to freetown sierra leone so from 1874 to 1886, Lagos and Colony was administered administered from Gold Coast. Lagos and Colony was administered from where? Gold Coast. Now in 1886, Melony was appointed governor of Lagos. In 1886, Melony was appointed the governor of Lagos. In 1889, the Niger Coast Protectorate was merged with the territories of the Royal Niger Company. On January 1, 1900, the Protectorate of Southern and Northern Nigeria was created. 1900, the Protectorate of the Southern and Northern Nigeria was created. In 1906, Lagos Colony was merged with Southern Nigeria. In 1940, and the Southern Protectorate were merged with Northern to form an amalgamated territory called Nigeria. That was an amalgamation in 1914. So we have um, we have that as that. So we'll talk about discourse, the civil service. Civil service is a complex organization with a body of permanent officials appointed in a civil capacity to assist political executive in formulation, execution, and implementation of government policies in ministries, departments, agencies, within space. We are back online. So when you see this called civil service, civil servants are, you know, it's a very complex system that has to do with the appointment. Let's not forget that when you are asked this question, it has to do with the appointment of permanent officials. Permanent officials, you know, in civil capacity to assist political executive in the formulation, execution, implementation of government policies, both in ministries, departments agencies within specific government work areas so we have that as that now they are exclusive assuming they are not included in police armed force local government service research institution and universities the officials whose remunerations are paid only out of monies voted and approved by national assembly are called civil servants basically that's what they are so what are the main characteristics of career civil service now one of the car there are a lot of characteristics here but let's just give them most of our time 
very first characteristic we have here we have permanence of tenure and stability of service equal opportunity on competing for government service merit to be so criteria to recruitment and due cognition the extent of territorial jurisdiction adequate steps are taken to provide interview training to the civil servant to keep them in touch with the latest trend and development in administrative practice so we have got to start so we have the composition of Nigerian civil service what how what, what does Nigerian civil service look like we have the general service and administration office of the vice president we have the state and the local affairs office office of the vice president we have in the office of the secretary of the government of the federation and the following we have one cabinet secretary two we have political affairs office three we have general service office special service office economic service office special duties ecological fund office police affairs office all these are under the secretary to the government secretary to the government of the federation are uh, as follows so we have the stance and we have the national assembly so we also have in the office of the head of service of the federation uh, follow the in the, in the in according to the structure in the office of the head of service of federation we have management establishment and management service we have public service office service welfare office and we have manpower development office that is on that office and head of service of the federation. So we have federal ministries, we have Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Aviation, Ministry of Commerce and Tourism, Ministry of Communication, Defense, Education, Federal Capital Territory, Finance, Health, Industry, Information, Internal Affairs, Justice, Labor and Productivity. Now we have petroleum resources planning commission power and steel science and technology solid minerals development we have transportation we have um, water supply and rural development we have ministry for youth and sports works and housing women affairs and social development cultural and tourism civil service commission a lot of them there actually so we have um, that as that. So what are the fundamental objectives of civil servants? The fundamental objectives now, we have the render professional and technical advice based on professional and technical advice, based on their experience and knowledge. They contribute effective and realistic implementation of declared objectives. Contribute to the formulation of policies and carry out approved program faithfully. They give honest and impartial advice on matters of public interest without fear of being regarded as the lawyer to the cost of the administration. Now they sustain the oath of public officer which requires them in essence. They faithful and bear true allegiance to the Federal Public Republic of Nigeria at all times. To place service to the public above self interest and to perform their official duties diligently and efficiently. So we have um, that as that. Okay, um, we're making progress. And, you know, I said it's going to be quite a long one. So we're making progress. So we are, what we have here, what are the goals of public service reform? forms now are done to improve upon whatever available with forms are done to improve upon them okay excuse me so one reform may be undertaken to improve administrative effectiveness like i said that earlier it could also be undertaken to accommodate new ideas values principles techniques and behaviors reform also be institutionalized at any point in time purposefully to reorientate the bureaucratic towards national goals the reorientation of the bureaucracy 
that's that for that so we have what are the principle underlying the ongoing reform in public education the principle we have in Nigerian public service is crucial but in defeat so we have um, a reform service is the key to meeting development challenge of the 21st century that's right so we are reforms provide the platform for applying a combination of strategy and approach to resolve the crisis governing strategies and approach to resolve crisis of governance and development so we have what we have what is planning planning is simply deciding in advance what is to be done Planning in a North Shore simply means deciding in advance what is to be done. It comprises the selection of objectives, policies, procedures, and programs from among alternatives. So we have what is a budget? A budget is a financial plan summarizing the financial experience of the past, starting a current plan, and projecting it over specific period of time in the future so what budgeting is all about so we have what that's what budget is all about the difference between budget and budgeting now talking about budgeting budgeting is also a financial plan it includes conscious and deliberate effort in at packaging a budget which is a federal plan embodying an estimate of proposed expenditure a given period and the proposed means the financial if proposed means financing them so let me do that again but that thing has to do with the financial plan the process whereby conscious and deliberate efforts is aimed at packaging a budget which is a financial embodiment as estimate of proposed expenditure there has to be a proposed expenditure then you have to package a budget what's called budgeting so we have what are the elements of budgets elements of budget we have a statement of expected revenue of proposed revenue it requires some authority to sanction it. It requires some authority to sanction it. So it's also limited period. You know, for a limited period. But it also set forth the producer manner in which collection of revenue and ambition expenditure is to be executed. So we have um, steps in systematic planning. So the steps in systematic planning, we have a careful definition and limitation of the problem as far as possible. That's the very first step, define the problem, then explore available information pertaining to the problem. That's the second step. Now, talk about possible alternative solution. Think about the possible alternative solution and experiment of one or more tentative solution. After you've thought about solution, then you can experiment. Then the evaluation of results is the eye is the light. The evaluation of results is the light of new development. So we have reconsideration of the problem and the result, and re decision is justified. This is the steps. The steps, you know, in systematic planning. So we have. Uh, that is that okay um i think we we'll just have to take a thing or two and then get back to it okay i think my system is not charging okay uh yeah yeah it's charging now excuse me uh let's fix that quickly or 
All right. So we have the next thing here. We have um, what is local government? Local government. If by any chance you don't have the past question, you can always reach out to me in the classroom to send you the past questions. You can download and go through yourself. Maybe there are things that I did not treat, and if you need them to be treated, you can feel free and talk to me even after the live uh, stream. So, we have local government is a formal structure of governance at the local level. Simple and precise. Formal structure of government at the local level. It's usually specified, it usually has a specified territory, a population, institutional structure, and autonomy is dependent. It is usually established by who? Legislations promulgated by a party of government. So, what are the dimensions of local government? Social dimension? This dimension has to do with social institution. It is an organized social entity based on feelings of oneness. An organized social entity based on the feeling of oneness. Social dimension. So we have um, economic dimension. It has to do with economic institution with a foremost role to play in promoting economic well-being. Just get the concept. Local government economic dimension has to with promoting economic well-being of the people locality. Talking about geographical dimension, it has to do with geographic dimension from the perspective of specific definition, territory, and jurisdiction. We have also what we call legal dimension, talking about the body of law, local government, the body of law. We have political dimension, we have administrative dimension. So we have what are primary purpose of local government. The primary purpose of local government, we have address basic and unique needs of the people within a particular locality. Local government exists to encourage greater public participation in governmental activities as well supposed to mobilize local people and resources for national development that is one a lot of i mean primary purpose so we have existence of local government permits the official to state at the center and to concentrate on vital complex national issues so we have um, that are the purpose of local government. So what are the features of local government? We have a local government should exist, a local body should exist, which is constitutionally separated from government, and they are, they are independent. The feature, their feature is that they are independent. No, they are not, um, okay, now local government, okay, the same it should, they are independent, now we have, Treasury, I know they have their own treasury. You know, they have okay, qualified staff, you know, local government, central government, and institution are to serve external advisors and inspectors. Okay, now that the features of local government, qualified staff, decision making on policy should be autonomous. You know, central government administrators. Okay, we have should be constitutionally separate from government and is responsible for significant range of service okay so we have that that and we have what are the three basic proposition equivalent to a rationale for local government propositions now equivalent maybe there was a time you know, where local government needed to be scrapped and something was proposed. We had the democratic participatory school of thought. Now, in this school of thought, the view the existence of local governments basically for the purpose of promoting 
democracy and participation in the grassroots level, thereby bringing government nearer to the people. That is what um, democratic participatory school of thought believes. So we have um, that as that. Now we have efficiency service school of thought. This school of thought is basically more on the rationale of rationale for government in the provision of social service. The advocate of rationale of government in the provision for social service. So we have that as that. Now what are the reasons for adopting policies of indirect rule? Policies of indirect rule. Why do we have to adopt policies of indirect We have a vast scale of areas and population to be administered. Interesting. That is interesting. So we have what are the characteristics of the system of indirect rule? Characteristics. Network, uh, network was part there. Let me back now. So we have um, characteristics of the system of indirect rule legitimacy. Okay, we have the characteristics of the system of indirect rule legitimacy. So we have territorial jurisdiction, we have native authority, we have legal system, we have native authority, which is in us. So we have um, Talking about the territorial jurisdiction, now the real issues of the traditional rulers was maintained, that is the land boundaries, you know, land boundaries were maintained. This is just talking about the system of indirect rule and how legitimate it was. Okay, so we have, I think we skipped something here. What are the reasons for adopting of policies of indirect rule? The reasons for adopting policies of indirect rule, we have the vast scale of areas and population to be administered. So, in relation to the vast area and each population size, there, there were rather few civil European officers to undertake the business of administration. So, we have um, that as that. So, we have the communication system at the beginning of the 20th century in northern Nigeria was exceedingly poor. Distance were wide and the roads only means of transmission was very bad. Okay. The, the, vast, the vast land would not um, allow, would permit indirect rule. Indirect rule was said to have helped minimize the cost of administration. So that's the reasons for adopting of indirect rule, policy of indirect rule. So we have that as that. And um, then we move to what are the functions of local government? We have functions of local government. We have um, no. we have collection of rates, collection line census. We have establishment and maintenance where are grounds and homes for death. We have licenses of bicycles, trucks, canoes, wheelbarrows, and carts. Establishment, maintenance, and regulation of slaughterhouses, slaughter slab, markets, motor parks, and public conveniences. We have structure, maintenance of road, streets, street lightnings, drains, and other public highway parks, gardens, and open space, or such public facility as may prescribe from time to time. By okay, now we have naming of roads, we have provision of maintenance of public convenience, public toilets, mm -hmm. assessment of privately owned houses, tenement like the collect tenement rates, control and regulation of outdoor advertisements, movement and keeping of pets, shops and kiosks, restaurants, bakeries, and other places for sale of food to the public. Laundries and licensing regulation and control of sales of liquor. So we have um, that as that. Then we can move to what we call public cooperation. What is public cooperation? Public corporations, corporations are owned by governments 
owned and managed by the state to run certain public enterprises of a specialized nature requiring business-like administration. Public corporations are established by Act of Parliament. Talking about public corporation in a nutshell, it's, um, a business-like a business-like structure owned and controlled by the government. So they are legal. Okay, they have legal personalities and can be sued. And be sued can enter into negotiation, sign contracts, acquire properties on their own on behalf of the government. What are the reasons for establishing public corporations? We have heavy capital requirements, public interest, national security, stabilization of we have stabilization of producers' income and development. We also have foreign competition. We have flexibility and operational. All these are the reasons. So we have what are the important characteristics of public corporation? One, separate legal entity and distinct from government. It also uh, it is a corporation in the sense that it is flexible and initiative. It has initiative of its own as private enterprise. It's a legal person entering into contract. It's seen as a legal person entering into contract. It has to it has to operate within the broad outline government policies. The personnel, the personnel of public corporation are recruited independently in pattern of business executive under terms and condition. Okay, now recruitment is done independently in public corporation, just like private corporations. So we have what we call privatization and commercialization. Now when we talk about privatization, privatization is the process of changing the owned. Privatization is the process of changing the own ownership of government companies, public enterprises, to private ownership through the sales and shares of such companies to individuals who will manage the companies effectively and profitably. Now, this means the transfer of government or shareholding in designated enterprises to private shareholders comprising individuals and corporate body. The transfer of ownership from the government to the private to the private sector. Transfer of ownership of government owned organization to private sector, which are referred to as privatization. Now the commercialization now is said to be change the way government companies operate to ensure that they run under the principle of trade and commerce make them market oriented when you make government oriented companies market oriented then you commercialize such a company and you do this in order to achieve to maximize profits so what are the four core beliefs of privatization there are core beliefs of privatization and there are four so while we have government is into more things than it should be so therefore it is intruding into private enterprise and lives. Now, government is unable to provide services effectively and efficiently. Now, public officials and public agencies are not adequately responsible to the public. Government consumes too many resources and thereby threatens economic growth. So that's why they room for privatization. So we have um, that start. So it's quite a long way to go. I think after this, we just have to call it a day here. Then we can continue from the next class. We're going to take it over. And um, that is that. So we have here what is some of the implementation organ of privatization and commercial? Now, organs of privatization and commercial in Nigeria. Fourth, we have Technical Committee on Privatization and Commercialization, as TCPC. The Technical Committee of Privatization and Commercialization, TCPC, as the implementation agency was established by the decree number 25 in 1988, which was later revamped with the promulgation of decree in 1998, which established the National Council of Privatization, NCP, 
national council of privatization as the principal policy and decision making body of all aspects of the program. So that's stuff of that. So we all will call these are the organs TCPC, we have the BEP, BPE, which is the Bureau of Public Enterprise. Bureau of Public Enterprise. We have Public Enterprise Arbitration Panel. All these are the organs of privatization mm -hmm. and commercialization in Nigeria. So we have that as that. Okay. So the function, so what are the functions of power of National Council of Privatization? So we have the functions of functions and power of the National Council on Privatization. Now they determine the political and economic social objective of public enterprise. They approve policies on privatization and commercialization. So, so um, the National Council of Privatization now, they are the one that approve the enterprise to be privatized and commercialized. They give approval. They submit yearly report to the president, supervise activities of the BPE. And we said the BPE is the rule of public enterprise. Just few among many others. So we have we might have closed cutting here tonight. They will continue from here in our next class. So thank you very much for sticking to the end of the class. Um, um, uh, we have so much person streaming this live tonight. So I believe they can get the um, recorded version of the class in the, in the initial time. We will definitely go through it. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for sticking around, and I wish you all success in your exams. I look forward to seeing you next tutorial. Bye-bye.